All right, hello, and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by another John, John Barrows. How are you doing, John? Doing fantastic, John. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. And where are you today, John? You're on the East Coast, correct? Uh, yeah, for a little while, actually. Uh, I usually travel uh, all over the place, but today I'm home in Boston, so uh, I was able to spend Memorial Day home with the family and uh, and enjoy it a little bit for, for a change, so I'm happy about that. Excellent. So what I wanted to talk to John about today is there's been a lot of talk uh, over the last while and futurists and people people predicting that artificial intelligence and bots and all that are going to replace a lot of salespeople. And they're painting this kind of dystopian view of, sa- of the sales world in the future, um, which I don't, I don't particularly agree with because I think, uh, I think salespeople are, are going to be even more critical. But from your point of view, John, um, one of the things you talk about is how salespeople need to make themselves relevant in a technology-driven future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I you know, it's funny because I was I was freaking out about this a while back. You know, it's uh, back at Dreamforce last year. Salesforce is one of my biggest customers, and they asked me to speak at Dreamforce, and um, I was like, fine. What do you you know, happy to speak? What do you want me to speak on? And it, it was they wanted well, artificial intelligence, and I was like, all right, well, I don't know much about it, but sure, you're gonna pay for my tickets, so, so I'm in. So what obviously it forced me to go really look into AI, so I could be ta- you know educated around it. And before I was really educated, I was I was convinced we were all getting replaced. Mm-hmm. And uh, but but now after doing some homework on it, you know, I realized my my opinion on this is kind of the big picture summary here is I think AI and these tools are going to make good sales reps great, great sales reps incredible, and average sales reps are relevant. Right. And so to your question of what do a sales reps need to do to stay relevant? First of all, don't be average. Don't just be going through the motions. And the ones that I talk about. You know, I talk a lot about death of the average sales rep. Mm-hmm. And the one when I say and I mean that by average, and I mean those ones that are just cranking out template emails, making generic cold calls, press and play on demos, all that stuff, that's all getting replaced by technology. Where I think we need to focus, um, if there's one thing I could kind of uh, share with the audience here yep. and, and try to get into sales reps mindset here, is the whole concept of context versus content. Right. And, and this is something I stole from Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, when he talks about, you know, he talked a little while ago about, you know, everybody talks about content is king, content is king. He goes, fine, if content is king, then context is God. Right. And that to me is marketing versus sales. Mm-hmm. Marketing is content, sales is context. And if we as sales professionals are not putting any context around our content, we're no different than marketing. And I have no idea why we're getting paid to do what we do. <laughs> so... You know, taking all those, the, all the messaging that artificial intelligence comes up with and making sure that before it goes out to that client, there's some context around it so it's relevant to them. Same thing with sharing content on, on, on any other social feeds. Instead of just retweeting or reposting something, put your opinion on it of why you think that piece of content is interesting or what value you got out of it and then sharing it. And the last point is is, is demos and, and presentations. Mm-hmm. Nobody cares about the 30 slide deck demo to go through every single slide like we were batch for in sure. bootcamp. You know, take 10 minutes, understand what the client's priorities are, a lot, you know, shave that 30 slides down to the 10 that are most relevant and talk to them about what is what is gonna help them really address their needs as opposed to your entire pitch that nobody cares about. Yeah. So no, it's it's incredibly important what you there, if I just break this down for a moment. First, the content piece, because the mantra has been over the last while is people have just been telling salespeople, oh, you just need to connect with people and share content, share content, right? And all you're doing is adding to noise, right? Uh, and uh, as, uh, as a great band once said, noise, noise, right? And uh, And there's so much of it coming at people that I think it's even harder today for buyers to make decisions because there's so much out there. And your idea of bringing context, I think, is is critical here. So so break that down for a moment. Uh, How are some of the ways that a a salesperson can really bring context to a piece of content and make themselves stand out and and provide value to a, a prospect? Yeah, so I think the easiest example, I mean, those are kind of the three areas that Mm -hmm. I talked about as far as emails and instead of blasting out and then um, sharing on social and then and then demos. But I think the one that is is probably the easiest to digest, if you will, is is the sharing of content on social Mm -hmm. or sharing 
with clients. And I think a lot of people get stuck in this to your point, hey, just share content, just share content. And it, and it drives me crazy when, for instance, marketing orgs tie all their sales reps' Twitter feeds to the marketing feed and then just basically retweet and post and, and effectively use them as an automated marketing tool, right, to build the company's brand. And what that does is that actually diminishes the sales reps' brand and gives them a harder, like a bigger challenge of engaging because people now look at them as just a spam bot and why would I, why mm. it's the difference again between you and marketing. Yeah. So an easy way, and this is really where social flipped for me, is being, you know, 42 years old, Look, when social selling first came out, I was just like, great, yet another thing I got to do to be successful in sales. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Add it to the list, right? And the whole idea of tweeting and posting and that type of stuff just to build a following kind of bothered me. But where it changed was when I started looking at it as educating myself first. Mm -hmm. So instead of just posting something to post it and get a following, looking at all these different tools and resources, like all the stuff that I can get information to come to me. So it's almost like my morning paper. And this is my personal routine where every morning I wake up from 7.30 to 8.30 in the morning, instead of checking my fantasy leagues or you know any of that stuff or, or reading the morning <laughs> paper, which usually gets me aggravated about right. something um, and is mostly irrelevant to what I care about, I set up tools like Feedly and Owler and Sales Navigator and those type of things to feed me information about my industry, my contacts, my prospects, my personas. And I read that stuff with the lens of educating myself first. Mm -hmm. And then when I find a piece of content that I think is really valuable, that's when I share it out there. But I put my opinion about what that piece of content is. So I say, you know, so instead of just retweeting a 39 page ebook here, retweet the 39 page ebook and say, hey, really good 39 page ebook here. If you're a VP of sales in the SaaS industry, try to integrate social selling into your routine. You should take a look at pages three, five and seven, because there are some tactical things there that really showed that. Right. That right. type of. Yeah. So, it makes it easier when you start to look at it as I want to learn, because then once you learn, then you can position yourselves as somewhat of the thought leader by sharing what your opinion is on that piece of content, good or bad. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love that. Uh, I love what you've said there, because that, that concept of educate yourself first. I mean, I think that's a that's a critical point that anybody watching should take away, because I do believe that um, today's salesperson, and this has been true for a while, is business acumen, understanding the industry, understanding the business of business, the business of your buyer, the industry they operate in, is critical. So to your point, if you are seeing it as educate me first, and then I can add some value and some insight. I, I think that's a that's a critical a critical piece. Well, and you actually brought up something that I think you said it's it's there for a while. The business acumen piece. The problem though is, and you know, somebody asked me recently if I could go back and tell my 22 year old self something, what would it be? My first answer to that was AB split test everything. So try different things, but be personal. You know, be be purposeful about it. So you try this approach, then this approach, and see which. But my second answer to that was was take business acumen way more proactively than I did, because you know my business acumen kind of. I learned my business acumen through pretty much osmosis in the yeah. sense that I would, it was more a, a byproduct of my activity. You know, yeah. I'd be going, 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 doing my thing. And then, you know, for instance, I'd ask a stupid question to a CEO and the CEO would say, that's a stupid question. <laughs> and I would say, okay, I guess I'm not going to ask that question again. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whereas now I would go back and I would start to be more thoughtful. I would read the books that CEOs read. I would join the forums and the groups that CEOs were in, not to troll for leads, but to literally listen to the language and the challenges that they had. And so that while I was having those conversations, look, I wouldn't, I'm never going to pretend, sure. you know, I'm going to be a CIO or no more than a CIO does. I didn't go to school for a CIO. I didn't, I don't understand their day to day, but I want to know enough about their job to ask ten, contextual questions. Right. So here's another tactical thing for the, for those who are mm -hmm. watching and listening is, you know, I used, I'm, I've always been a priority based seller, right? Mm -hmm. In the sense that my belief is that if I can't tie my solution, when your CEO stood up in the beginning of the year and said, these are our priorities this year, this is what we got. If I can't tie my solution, one or two of those, mm -hmm. good luck selling it. Yeah. Right. But the way I got to that historically was always, well, tell me about your priorities. You know what I mean? And I would ask a very general question. And I would get usually very general answers, mm -hmm. right? Well, revenue. It's like, oh, great. Let me yeah. show you how to track your revenue. <laughs> but now when I go into a CIO, right, instead of just saying, what are your priorities? I'll go and I'll do some homework beforehand and say, hopefully if they're a publicly traded company, I can look at it. But if they're not, most likely, then I just go on Google and I type in CIO, healthcare, priority, 2018, see what right. comes up. 
read a couple of articles about what are some of the challenges that CIOs in the healthcare industry specifically in 2018 are faced with, mm -hmm. and then be able to ask those type of questions. So say, hey, John, thanks so much for your time today. Um, I really appreciate it. You know, I had a few questions for you. One of the things we're typically dealing with CIOs in the healthcare industry, and they're telling us in 2018, their top priorities are X, Y, Z. Are those yours? Mm -hmm. Even if they're not, the fact that you show you know my world a little bit, yeah. Yeah. tends to open up the conversation a lot more. Yeah, and I think, uh, again, you've touched on something that uh, I think is critically important too, and that's the whole concept of doing prep work, right? Of really spending some time, as you say, understanding what's going on, figuring out what's happening in the vertical that you're focused on or, or the sub segment of that vertical, whatever it is, but doing, but doing that homework. And I, and I feel that, you know, we, sometimes we just tend to rush everything. And, and, you know, I've said this a number of times, like I'll see, you could look up any salesperson's calendar and you're going to see all their appointments on it, right? But where do you see the half hour prep work on the calendar? Almost never. Yeah. This is why actually I, I train on this. And one of the things I suggest everybody to do in that regard, because I'm, I'm very similar to most sales reps. I, I both sell and train mm -hmm. and account manage, right? Right. So I usually do training Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Mondays and Fridays are my days where I have meetings and it's, you know, it's back to back to back to back to back. So I don't have time to prep for every meeting right before it and then, you know, do it afterwards. So what I'll do is I have a checklist of things that I go through and I, and I actually structure the way I take my notes. So every single time I go to take my notes, I take them in a very structured format and I have a checklist that feeds into that. So the night before a day with five, six, 10 meetings, mm -hmm. I'll just go in very quickly and do the checklist at a bare minimum, do the checklist for each one of those. What's the website? What does that company do? Who are the people that I'm talking to? What's the agenda for the call? What are my goals for the call? And then ideally a couple of nuggets in there of mm -hmm. maybe based on their website or you know some news and events that I can use to strike up the conversation. And look, for 10 meetings, obviously, I'd love to you know, have sure. a half an hour for every meeting to prep. But my meetings are usually half hour long. So I usually do five to 10 minutes of prep before mm -hmm. each meeting, unless it's a huge one. And then I do a lot more. But with that checklist, the night before, within an hour, I'm ready for tomorrow. And then I can bang through all those, those meetings, all fully prepared, know what my talk track is, know what my specific questions to them are and be in it and actively listening as opposed to trying to figure out, oh, what do I need to ask now? And I forgot about that and the whole crap. What's my next meeting about? Those type of things, right? Yeah, and that's a great point too, is that with with that little bit of prep work, whether it's five minutes, whether it's half hour, whatever, depending on the size, is the fact that not only you'll be prepared and you will sound knowledgeable about what you're talking about and you will communicate that you've done some work, right? Some research, which will gain you a little bit of respect. But the most important thing, as you said, is that you can actually be present and engaged during the call itself. Exactly. And it's like, if you've ever been in a situation where in the middle of like almost all meetings, we've done such a poor job as sales professionals uh, running meetings. I can tell because what happens is you know, every meeting starts off with the with a client like this, with their <laughs> hands folded, leaning back, basically like, yep, tell me what you got. And you could tell how bad we are because it's funny, even today, you, I when I get on a call with a, with a prospect, they start with, well, I don't know how much you know about us, but let me give you a little background. And we were founded in this and we started here and this is what we do. And I actually almost feel rude at this point interrupting people because I'll be like, I, I'm sorry. Look, I was on your website. I know what you do. I know your background. I know what your market is. I have some questions specifically related to that. And you can almost hear them be like, oh, oh, wow. Wait, we can have an actual conversation. I don't have to go through the motions here. And it's and, and it's the what I want to get is if you've ever been in a meeting where somebody has said, wow, you've done your homework. Mm hmm. Like that immediately changes the dynamic of the meeting. You can legitimately feel the client sitting up in their seat and going, oh, crap, I got a sales rep here that actually knows what they're talking about and have prepared for this. I got to come up with my A game here or else I'm going to get embarrassed. Yeah. And that's a great point is because now you've kind of switched the dynamic. And number one, you've shown respect, which I think is key. You've shown that you value uh, and respect the person's time and, you know, the issues that they're facing to do that research. But you've all, as you say, you've almost put it up to the prospect to say, hey, I put it, I put work into this. I'm serious. Are you? Right. Well, and that's the other thing, a small nugget here that I do. So with that prep, with the checklist comes a, an agenda, right, for the mm -hmm. call. 
not a 50 point agenda, sure. but I call it a shared agenda. And it's reduced my no show rates by about 50% because it, I think it, what it does is it shows exactly what you said there is that I'm preparing because if, if I got to sit, I, I'll be honest, if I got 15 meetings on my calendar in a day and I need a break, the, I color code my calendar. And mm -hmm. the first thing I'm going to do is look down on there and see if, if I, so I have client meeting, prospect meeting, um, client meeting prospect, and then vendor meeting. Right. And if that's a sales pitch, and I look at it and I'm like, I don't really know why, right. what this is about. I don't, you know, the rep hasn't sent me an email. I just scheduled two weeks ago. That's the first one that I go onto my calendar and I decline it and say, sorry, man, I need to reschedule here. Mm -hmm. But if a sales rep, so what I do is the night before, hey, John, looking forward to our meeting tomorrow. Here's two or three things that I want to talk about. What, are, what else do you want to make sure that I add to the agenda here so we can get the most out of our time together? And that goes out the day before and then updates the meeting invitation the morning of with it in there. Well, now all of a sudden I see the reps preparing. They've reminded me twice. I look in the agenda. I know exactly what we're there to talk about. You know, whether I responded to it or not, at least shows that that reps in it. So now I'm much less likely to d delete that meeting or reschedule that meeting because I can tell, man, a reps already put some effort into this. You know what I mean? So, yeah. all right, let's, let's go through this. I don't want to be the asshole that, you know, flakes on this kid. <laughs> so. No, that's, that's great. So we're bumping up against the end of our time here, but uh, listen, there's been some great, uh, some great nuggets for everyone to take away here. And I think, you know, uh, context, not just content, and really educating yourself, doing the work, um, preparing properly for meetings, agenda, so you establish uh, that you've done your homework. Those are those are fantastic insights. So, John, in the last couple of moments here, why don't you tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more about you and contact you? Yeah, I appreciate it. So, you know, I, I do sales training, but I'm mostly a, a, I'm a sales guy that happens to train. Mm -hmm. You know, I sell every single day. I use all these techniques. I actually took this training when I was a VP of sales and it helped me get my company to the point where I sold it off to Staples. So now I, I do this and I do it on my own. Um, and so if you just go to jbarrows.com, J-B-A-R-R-O-W-S.com, that's where you'll find everything. I have a resource library where I give probably 85, 90% of the web stuff I do away for free. I got a blog that goes out every week that was really tactical um also you know you hit me up on instagram twitter and all those handles are john m as in michael barrows all one word snapchat as well um and I'm, I'm, me and morgan the kid i just hired morgan ingram mm -hmm. um we're both really trying to change the game when it comes to sales training and instead of holding back all that content and saying hey you have to pay me a crap load of money for my big brain mm -hmm. here let's flood the market with really good stuff and then hopefully you'll see some value in engaging with us so uh, if you go to our website, you'll find all the social channels. You'll find all the resources there. And uh, and if you like something or if you're looking for content, let me know and I'm happy to help. Great, uh, John Barras. Thank you very much. This has been a great interview. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. We'll see you for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, John. Thanks. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.